here to discuss. Florida Congressman Matt Gates, Texas Congressman Chip Roy. So Chip, let me start with you tonight. So up until, I guess, some point today, earlier today, uh, you did have an, a, a stopgap measure. You had your House Freedom Caucus uh, sponsoring a deal, making a deal with the more moderate mainstream caucus, stream caucus. That would impose an 8 percent spending cut on federal agencies, not including national uh, def not including the national defense budget, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any amounts designated for disaster relief, and that would fund the government through October 31st. So my question is, what happened to that deal, and where do we go from here? Yes, yeah, Sean, good to be on. I mean, first of all, everything you just said, uh, we should, as Republicans, have already passed 12 appropriations bills that would deal with all of those policy issues you just described and cut the overall spending level. That is what we should have done. We have not done that. So now we're sitting here in September and we're trying to figure out what we need to do next. Uh, today, unfortunately, we voted down a Department of Defense appropriations bill that would have cut the abortion tourism, cut transgender surgeries, cut chief diversity officers, cut diversity, equity, inclusion because of the great work we did trying to force conservatives onto appropriations committees. And similarly to the question you just asked, we put forward a bill that would have cut spending to all of the non-defense, non-veteran bureaucracy by 8% and attached to it H-2, the strongest border security bill we've ever passed to try to check Joe Biden's open borders. We wanted to tell Democrats, you should either shut down the border or you're going to deal with a shutdown government. Unfortunately, now we are in danger of turning over home field advantage to the Democrats and giving Democrats power to make the decisions next week rather than doing our job. I think that's a mistake. Some of my colleagues in good faith, including the one who's just about to talk, who's a friend of mine, uh, I think we made a bad choice this week. I think we could have moved forward. Now we got to figure out how to set a top line number and try to move appropriations bills like we should have done uh, all the way back in July. All right. The House tried voting on the rule for the DOD defense appropriations here. Um, Matt, was that voting against even bringing up the bill or having a discussion and voting on it and the 170 amendments that I guess you can add to a bill like that? And and let's talk about what what's on your agenda here. You are a leading critical voice of of Speaker McCarthy. Where do you, what do you want and how is this going to proceed? And do you agree that Republicans win or lose together one way or the other? There won't be some winners and some losers. You either win together or lose together. I can assure you that Speaker McCarthy deserves all the criticism and more because it's his fault that we haven't considered individual appropriations bills up to this point. And that's actually not a bug of the system. It's a feature because they want to jam us at the end of the government running out of money and then under that time pressure and the fear of a shutdown, centralize power so that the lobbyists and the special interests who own Kevin McCarthy who give him all the money, get to make the decisions. Now, today, I agreed with Chip Roy that we should have proceeded on to the defense appropriations bill. I would have voted for that bill. We were not able to proceed because some of my colleagues didn't feel like Kevin McCarthy was in compliance with the agreement in January to constrain himself to a top-line spending level that did not embrace the ballooning budgets of Bidenism and COVIDism. So my plan is not to lump every disparate agency of government into one vote on a continuing resolution, but instead to only review these things separately and independently. That is the serious way to go about this work. Chip is right. We will have a shutdown. But I don't believe that an 8 percent 30-day cut would have yielded the programmatic reforms that would create any long-term savings. The only well, way me, to do Matt, that is open amendments, this. individual bills, no more continuing resolutions or omnibus. We have the moderate wing now threatening a, a clean CR, which would be a loss for anybody that believes in fiscal responsibility. You have even Mitch McConnell admonishing the you members of the House for daring to even consider fiscal responsibility. I think the irresponsible one is him in this particular case, because I think spending levels are too high. Two trillion in new debt this year alone. At what point is enough enough? So my question I, to I'm you glad, is I'm glad that Leader McConnell can muster an admonishment. He must be feeling better. But when it comes to a clean CR, if House moderates want to join with Democrats to advance every feature of the Biden government, thinking that that's going to be good for them politically, they will be signing 
writing their own political death warrant and handing it to their executioner, because it won't be conservatives going after those moderates in the, mid in, in the next elections. It'll be the very Democrats that they're in coalition with. And you know what, Sean? If your viewers in this country are really governed by a uniparty, then let's go ahead and expose that, and people like Chip Roy and I will be fighting against it for less spending and to defang this woke and weaponized government. All right. So I guess, Chip, the, the question is, and I think Matt brings up a lot of good points here. I mean, how do, if we're going to put the American people first and fiscal responsibility is key, 33 trillion, uh, for most people, I guess it becomes million, billion, trillion. 33 trillion. Just imagine that number that we're putting on our kids and grandkids. Two trillion in new debt under Biden this year alone. So, you know, give me a solution that benefits the people of this country. That's who I know you both want to serve and supposedly your fellow members want to serve. Yes, yeah, Sean. I mean, look, I couldn't agree more. And again, Matt and I are equally committed uh, and on the same team in terms of what we're trying to do to push back on the Biden administration and cut spending. Look, the issue here is, and the reason I was supportive of putting forward a proposal that would have advanced spending for literally 30 days with an 8% cut to federal spending and to the federal bureaucracy and move the HR2 border security bills, because, Sean, my state of Texas is under assault. People are dying. People are dying from fentanyl poisoning. Little children are getting sold in the sex trafficking trade, and I wanted to hang that around Chuck Schumer's neck. I wanted him to have to go back to the people of New York and say, you know what, all that you're facing here in New York, I'm going to ignore that. You know what, I'm more interested in an open border than in making sure that we actually close the border and instead right, but we're going to end up Chip, with a shutdown go? government. That's the reality. What's the strategy going forward? Well, I mean, right now we're in a position where we're, I'm literally in the Capitol. I'm going to go back downstairs trying to figure out a top line number that will get 218 Republicans united to move forward with appropriations bills. And again, I wish we'd have done this months ago. We're working towards trying to do it. But look, it's a bit of an uphill climb because I do believe that there are members of the Republican conference who are about right on the verge of working a deal with Democrats, in which case we end up with a continuing resolution that funds into December at the Pelosi levels, and we may end up with Ukraine funding or emergency spending on top of it. I'd like to stand in front of that. That's why I put forward a proposal that I thought would cut spending, secure the border of the United States. That's where I think we ought to go. We ought to be beating the heck out of Democrats over what they're doing to open borders and their spending. We had a way to do it, and unfortunately, we didn't take that path. So now I'm down here working and trying to figure out what's next. All right. So, Matt, let me go to you. And I agree with both of you. I think individual appropriations bills, the appropriation bills should have been passed. There's no excuse for that, especially when you are in control of the House, albeit a small majority. But that is a reality. You are dealing with moderate voices in that caucus, apparently ones that would even do a deal with the Democrats. So I ask you, now dealing with the reality of where we are, going forward, what works for you? What can you and Chip put on a whiteboard and, and get that caucus to buy into? 218 of you anyway. Yeah, I, I can probably tell you that I'll support any top-line number that Chip Roy can support. That's the trust I have in him as a fiscal conservative. But what I won't do is pick the border fight by surrendering every other fight and then saying, well, you know, we'll give Biden everything he wants and everything but the border, and we think that's good politics on the border. In instead, what I would propose is pick the border fight by advancing our appropriations bill for the Department of Homeland Security. And you know what else we should do to pick a border fight? Impeach Mayorkas. He deserves it. He is violating agree. our laws now, as, as, as good we as the bill agree. Chip wrote is, you know, but yeah, but, but see, that's the way to do it. He Not says by the border playing on the, on the Democrats, uh, uh, you know, side of the field. Instead, we ought to be in the business of offense, not continuing resolutions that lump elements of government together that have nothing to do with one another. All right. Let me put out a scenario. Let's say you guys are able to get together and you pull 18, 218 votes together. Uh, and I think these other votes, appropriations, a month more added on to it. That's enough time. They need to get their job done. My question is, is really simple. Then you're going to have to reconcile with the Senate. I don't think Mitch McConnell or moderates in the Senate support even responsible spending. So you go to conference. What happens in conference? What then becomes acceptable? Because now you're definitely going to water it down. At least they'll be insisting on it. And how long are you guys willing to let the government shut down in the process, Chip? 
Well, first of all, I'm not 100% sure that we're going to get to shut down for the reasons I was just articulating in terms of some of our colleagues that are talking to some of our other colleagues on the other side of the aisle. But if we were to get there, I certainly think we should ride it out as long as we can to force uh, our Senate you know, colleagues to the table. But you've got to send the right conferees to the table. Today was a good sign on the National Defense Authorization Act that, that we've got a few of our conservatives from HFC on the uh, conference, uh, you know, committee. But uh, now, right now, our first job is to get some legislation out of the House, send it over to the Senate that represents our priorities at the right spending levels. That's what we've got to do. We've got to focus like a laser. Re American people sent us here to actually stand up for them against the Biden Democrat machine. We've got to send bills out of this House that represent our spending levels and policy priorities. All right, Matt, we'll give you the last word. Yeah, one thing Chip and I agree on for sure is that the best way to prepare for a conference that is successful for the American people is for the House of Representatives to start with the most conservative position, not for us to try to meet Mitch McConnell halfway before even uh, getting to what will be necessary to save the country. So, gosh, if we had the White House and we had the border bill that Chip put together and we had individual spending bills, we might just have one last best hope to save this country from financial ruin. Republicans need to pay attention. If you don't distinguish yourself in the House on the issue of balanced budget spending and not putting debt on our children, where are you going to fight? Where's, where, what are you there for? Thank you both. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.